Thank you for watching this part eight of a 10 part series we're calling The Vast Voyage, which outlines qualified plans from even before implementation to closing one down and everything in between. In this section, we'll be going over Roth IRA rollovers and conversions. Hi there, my name is Kenner French and I'm with vastsolutionsgroup.com where tax, finance, and artificial intelligence meets for the entrepreneur. We do qualified plan consulting to include administration of 401k plans, profit sharing plans, defined benefit plans. We've been in business for over 50 years and use artificial intelligence to better the plight of the entrepreneur. I personally have been in the industry since 1994. I've written two books with another on its way. I have several articles on LinkedIn. I'm a Forbes.com contributor and also have done the same thing for the Palm Beach Times. Most importantly, I've been married for over 25 years and have a passion for helping small business owners and entrepreneurs to prepare for retirement and even beyond. You've paid money for this. Let's get right to it. Now, let's talk about some of the very specific recent issues involving Roths. First, making rollovers and a conversion to a Roth IRA. And second, rolling over money into retirement plans, designated Roth accounts, etc. Rollovers and conversions are a way to move money into a Roth IRA. Now, this is an area where the law changed about 10 years ago. Prior to 2010, you can only roll over a converted amount into a Roth IRA if, you, if your modified adjusted gross was less than $100,000 and your filing status was anything but married filing separate. But these requirements were eliminated years ago, allowing more people to roll over or to convert to a Roth IRA about 10 years ago. The amounts you can roll over from a retirement plan are called eligible rollover distributions, which are defined by what they aren't. So, so for example, an eligible rollover distribution is not a required minimum distribution. Anything of a series of substantial equal payments made at least once a year over the employee's life or life expectancy, the joint life of or life expectancies of the employee and beneficiary or a period of 10 years or younger, or a hardship distribution, none of the above. Publication 560 goes over retirement plans. It's available on the irs.gov site. It contains a complete list of what types of distributions from a plan are not eligible to be rolled over. You also can't convert amounts from IRAs into a Roth IRA, for example. You can't convert any or a required minimum distribution you have to take it from an IRA into a Roth IRA. If you choose to convert a traditional, a SEP or a simple into a Roth IRA, make sure to take any required minimum distributions from them before you do the conversion. If you roll over or convert amounts that were not eligible, you have made what's called an excess contribution. You can withdraw excess contributions to a Roth IRA along with the earnings by the date of your tax returns to include extensions or you will be subject to an annual 6% excise tax. If you are the beneficiary of a retirement plan account, different. You can roll over your inherited amount to a Roth IRA. Now, however, if you are a designated non-spouse beneficiary, then you must roll over directly, meaning a trustee to trustee transfer to the inherited Roth IRA, as it were. If you inherit an IRA from your, let's say, spouse, you can convert it into a Roth IRA in your own name, but you can't if you inherit it from someone other than your spouse. A number of technicalities there. A recharacterization allows you to undo a rollover or a conversion as though you had moved over amounts to a traditional IRA instead of a Roth IRA. Why would you want to do this, you say? Let, let's say you convert your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. You then have to include its value in your income that year. But if the Roth IRA assets have significantly decreased in value, you have to pay the tax on the value at the time you have converted, which was much higher theoretically. You can move the converted amount back into the original new or new traditional IRA. I just use an example of a recharacterization uh, of a conversion traditional Roth to an IRA and then back to a traditional IRA. If your Roth IRA is funded by a rollover from a retirement plan, then you would have this amount transferred to the traditional IRA. 
you must recharacterize a Roth IRA to a traditional IRA by the due date, including extensions of your tax return and only through a trustee to trustee transfer. The recharacterization can apply to all or just a portion of the amount converted or rolled into a Roth IRA, but the entire amount in the Roth IRA is used to determine the appropriate amount of the earnings or losses that go with the recharacterized amount. That is why most people, when they roll over or convert amounts to a Roth IRA, do so to a brand new IRA or IRAs, as opposed to existing ones that contain other funds. Paperwork issue. A reconversion or a do-over with a reconversion, you are redoing the conversion or rollover, continuing with my previous example I gave. We started with a traditional IRA converted to a Roth IRA, changed our minds and moved the money back to a traditional IRA. But now with a reconversion, we are changing it to a Roth IRA again. This, however, there is a bit of a waiting period. You can't convert and reconvert an amount during the same tax year or if later during the 30 days after you did a recharacterization. If you do, it's what's called a failed conversion. Not good. Now, Roth IRAs only allow after tax conversion uh, contributions, and therefore you have to include any previously untaxed money that you move into a Roth IRA in your taxable income in the year you do the rollover or the conversion. A rollover or conversion for this year means you must have moved the money to the Roth IRA through a direct trustee to trustee transfer by December 31st of this year or received the distribution by December 31st this year and deposited the distribution to a Roth IRA within 60 days. A general tax rule gets a little complicated when you're trying to move money from retirement plans and IRAs that contain a mix of both pre-tax and after-tax money. You generally can't just move the after-tax amounts into Roth IRAs. Instead, you usually have to prorate the amounts into their pre-tax and after-tax portion and then include the pre-tax amount of the rollover and conversion in your income. To calculate the pre-tax amount of your retirement plan distribution, you first figure out the after-tax amount and then subtract that amount to the after-tax amount from the total distribution to the determine the pre-tax amount. First now, divide the sum of your after-tax contributions in all of your plan accounts by the value of all your plan accounts. You multiply this after-tax fraction by your distribution. Some notes, when chain calculating, you don't include designated Roth accounts in this formula. The amount distributed is the amount directly rolled over to a Roth IRA or the amounts actually distributed to you. It gets tricky though. If you receive a distribution and only roll over part of it to a Roth IRA, the rule is that the first dollars rolled over come from the pre-tax portion of the distribution followed by the after-tax portion. The rules to determine the pre-tax amount of the IRA distribution that can be converted to a Roth IRA either directly or indirectly through a 60-day transfer that you divide the after-tax amounts in all of your IRAs by the total value of your IRAs. Now that you've a ratio that we call after-tax amounts, multiply this ratio by the distribution to determine the after-tax portion of the distribution. To figure the pre-tax portion of your distribution, you subtract the after-tax portion, and what is left represents the pre-tax portion. Some things to keep in mind when doing this calculation. Use December 31st account values in the year of the distribution, not the values of the distribution date. Include values of all of your IRAs, including SEP, simple IRAs, but not Roth IRAs. You don't include your spouse's IRAs, by the way. Now, unlike distributions from a retirement plan, if you only convert part of the traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, you use the proration rules to determine the pre-tax and after-tax portion of the converted amount. Hopefully, now, this was a little understandable. There's a lot of little specifics with respect to the IRS, Department of Labor rules, etc., etc. Now, that's what we're here for. If you need any help on any of the specifics, please check us out on the web at www.vastsolutionsgroup.com or give us a call at 888-808-8278. Once again, my name is, ben, ben, is Kenner French and it's indeed been a pleasure and hopefully in some way this has helped you 
to understand the specifics about Roths.